Um, that's, uh, that brings us to our next section, where Kevin enlightens us with a wonderful recent news story about 3D so, printing. Adam, thank you so much for bringing me in, into this, because I thought this was a cool story. I, um, I, I kind of got drawn in, I guess, by the title, just because it, it made a lot of... Uh, interesting notes about amorphous metal. And from what it sounds like, uh, there is a company that has, uh, or two companies that have partnered together to develop this technology side by side, which they're called uh, a glassy metal, also metallic glass. So um, materials that have uh, mechanical properties that are like metal, but they're different in, in a lot of ways. So it sounds like you can manipulate these materials in different ways than you can regular metal. Um, I, I'm not, I'm going to try not to read directly from the article, but it sounds like it's um, uh, very desirable for uh, industries like automotive manufacturing, medical and aerospace. Um, when you look at something that is uh, amorphous, it's not necessarily like viscous, but it is low density. Um, but at the same time, it claims to be a higher uh, strength uh, yield strength two times higher than steel while still being elastic and springy. So I thought that that was cool and I would bring it up to guys who nerd out about 3D printing because I thought you guys would think that was cool too. That's awesome. Did you say metallic glass? Yeah, metallic glass is how they describe it um, or a glassy metal. Um, okay, I don't, I'm not sure what their difference would be, but it sounds like you're uh, rapidly undercooling metals from a molten state, and that's kind of how mm -hmm. you get to this end result of an amorphic metal production process. I just thought it was cool to think, and like in my head, I'm thinking of like a, uh, a foundry where you have these channels of molten steel coming through, and there's like you know an extrusion head or something like that, and that's really what you're producing. I'd love to see. Maybe we can find an image for it by the time we publish this. Like what an example of an amorphous metal would look like. Like is it cartoonish? Can you smack it with a hammer and it's going to flatten out, or <laughs> like what's going to? You know what I mean? It actually bounces if you toss it against the ground. Like flubber. <laughs> No, that's awesome. I uh, It reminds me of, I was reading about a desktop metal patent, actually, that they got, I think, last year about 3D printing with bulk metallic glasses. And apparently, it's not only a really cool, really strong material, but it lends itself really well to 3D printing, where in theory, we wouldn't need any sintering whatsoever, where you could just directly print a part and be able to, to handle it. So what is what is a glassy metal then? Like, does that sound more like it's like a uh, carbon fiber impregnated, like, or fiberglass impregnated plastic? This is glass and metal together, maybe. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Actually, Ken, you took a powdered metal class locally, didn't you? <laughs> I know it was a while ago, and now I'm putting you on the spot. But in terms of amorphous metals. I'm a, I'm not an expert. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. I'm not a, a metals expert, but I think I would assume it has more to do with grain direction. Um, and grain direction is usually created by how you cool the metal and how quickly you cool it and how controlled that cooling pattern is. Um, I worked a little bit in castings, and I know when when they would do castings, the the rate of cooling was absolutely critical to getting the correct grain direction or correct grain growth. So I imagine if they're if they're talking about this from a printing perspective, I frankly don't know which is more. I assume amorphous, if they're talking about it, would be more desirable to extrude. <laughs> but I have to imagine you need to be you'd have to be extruding at an extremely high temperature. So I would it's still assume. it's still a metal base. So, yeah, the article um, doesn't go, you know, too much behind the science. Um, it does say that uh, the cooling process uh, creates lattices and defects in the lattice can make metal weaker. Therefore, by rapidly undercooling it, um, this atomic structures become frozen and it's more like glass at that point, maybe. But the thing that struck me was, um, to your point, Adam, like in the future, if you're extruding 
you know, ready printed and there's no sintering, um, you know, the, the properties of this material, they say that they are, their claim is isotropic mechanical properties. So it's strong in, in every direction, um, low density and high yield strength, like I said, but then also, um, biocompatible, high corrosion resistance and magnetic permeability. So it sounds like it would have a lot of applications if, if it, you know, kind of got off the ground. I just thought it was cool technology. I'd be interested in understanding how they're printing it because thinking just in terms of FDM, the weakness that's created compared to a raw block of ABS, just for say, compared to a printed ABS part is not the material, it's the nature of the process. Right. So the, the layer to layer, it, layer to layer adhesion is really what's causing that weakness. So if you're extruding this metal, no matter how amorphous that metal is, I think it'd be more dependent on how well you get that metal to congeal layer to layer. I mean, that's why sintering you get such high, I wouldn't say completely isotropic, but much closer to isotropic because you're basically borderline melting the layers together. Right. Kevin, well, do you know where they were off the top of your head? Do you know where they were doing this research? Um, no, it didn't, uh, it didn't say in the article, it said that, uh, who the companies were, um, okay. but not necessarily where that research was being done. Um, it's probably somewhere in Europe, isn't it? They're really in the metal printing over there. Most likely. Um, I'm just seeing if this got a link, but no, um, not seeing it. Yeah. I think right now in today's world, getting big metal 3d printed parts is nearly impossible because of the sintering that occurs whether it's with dmls or with a metal injection molding based system um which really seem to be the two big front runners commercially um but if you're printing with amorphous metals and then i'm uh making some assumptions here <laughs> connecting the metallic glass to some of the patents that i've seen already uh with with no shrinkage and being just able to directly print the metal, that could open up a lot of avenues. Um, sure. Before we even touch the biocompatibility aspect of it. it, it sounds promising. It sounds interesting. I will. Um, I will keep monitoring this, um, and if we have updates on it, I'll bring it back because I think it's cool. It is super cool. Um, I'm now. You are now designated as the amorphous metals expert. I mean, if you got to be known for something, you got to be known for something. I might as well. <laughs> One thing that a lot of people approach us about is about using metal 3D printing to make injection molds, uh, because injection molding has such a, a reputation for being expensive and time consuming. 